Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. So I've been making these woodworking videos for a little over two and a half years now, but as I've mentioned in the past, I had always wanted to start making woodworking videos ever since I started woodworking eight years ago. Now, every single time I tried to make videos before I got into this, they always turned out pretty poorly. I was never really happy with the result and therefore they were never released or I never actually finished the entire video. I actually gave up before the end. Well, exactly five years ago, I built a hall table in this shop. It was the very first thing I built in this shop and I recorded the whole thing. My intention when I recorded it was to do a really long build series about it, but as I watched the footage back, it was pretty horrendous. <laughs> so I've taken some time to go through and edit this thing down to something a little more watchable and that's what you're about to see. I hope you enjoy a younger version of me, a less skilled version of me, and a more awkward version of me. Hi, today I'm going to be making a walnut hall table. So I've got my, my few boards here and I kind of started laying things out a little bit and I thought I'd talk about um, this kind of wood selection and laying out the parts on the boards before you actually start cutting them up and uh, processing them further. So let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, so I have my boards laid out here and I already went through and kind of had a look at them to see what's going to work out best. A uh, quick thing to do is just kind of roughly write down some rough dimensions of what you're trying to get to. Uh, for me, I need some legs, some aprons, and the top. I don't have any eight quarter stock for my legs, so I'm going to glue up um, two pieces of four quarter to make the full leg. So what will happen is I'll cut this board and then cut down the middle, fold it in half, and then glue it together and you'll have a nice book matched end. Okay, now these two boards here, I've decided to make my top out of them. One of the main reasons I wanted these boards for the top is they're actually sequentially off the log. So if I were to fold them up like this, this is how the log was before it was cut. These two boards together will give me about a one foot deep top. Uh, the original, my original idea was to go up about 12 and a half, 13, but this is one of those times where you just kind of look at the wood and you want to just kind of modify your plans as you go. Now using my guidelines that I drew, I'm going to start cutting the boards down to their rough size. Next I flatten one face of each board with my jointer planer combo. And use my straight line rip jig to square and straighten an edge. Even though I had a jointer, the bed length was too short to flatten anything with any significant deviation from flat. Next I ran the boards through the drum sander to clean up the other face. Can you tell how little I trusted that combo machine yet? <laughs> to start making the legs, I'll rip the boards into strips. I really don't miss not having an outfit table. A little glue and folding the strips up as they were cut leaves me with a bookmatch face which helps me hide the glue joint. Next I started working on the top. The boards need to be edged and jointed to get the seam nice and tight. Take a look and see how it looks. Look at that. Back then every panel had to have biscuits, so I added some of those with some glue and clamped up the top. Now back to the legs. I'll clean up and square up two faces and use a table saw to rip them into square stock. and then I cut them to length with the miter saw. Back at the bench, I chose the best orientation for the legs and marked out where the mortises will need to be cut. Okay, so I've laid up my legs in a manner that I think is going to work out pretty well. Uh, something that I wanted to do for sure was to put my uh, single face wood towards the front of the piece. I wanted the seam line to be on the, basically the sides and the inside of the piece as well. The mortises can then be cut with the mortiser, and here I ran the mortise all the way through the top of the leg, which is not something I would do anymore. I prefer to leave some material at the top of the leg to give it some strength. In this case, it's probably not too big of a deal since the hall table doesn't really experience much stress. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do with the front piece is I'm going to bring over the table saw and cut my top, this my top rail and then my bottom rail, and just kind of determine how big the middle is going to have to be. First thing I'm going to do is just clean up my existing edge here. Just a really light pass on the table saw. Just really just clean it up. I'll make my one inch rip here and then I'll make another one inch rip from this side 
uh, to leave the middle for the drawer front. Next, I'll figure out the locations of the mortises for the front rails and cut those with the mortiser as well. At this point, the aprons have been cut to final length. Now that I have the size of the top, I can place the legs directly onto the top with the overhang I want and trace around them. Then I can use a ruler to measure the apron lengths directly off the top. Okay, now to cut my apron pieces to length, I'm going to use my miter saw. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is square up one edge and then I'll measure out. I'm going to clamp a stop block and I'll cut the other piece. Okay, now I'll repeat the same process for the, um, the back and the top and bottom front rails. Next, the tenons were cut on the ends of the aprons and the bottom area was removed to make the tenons the right width. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, since I'm done cutting all my joinery on my legs, is I'm going to go ahead and taper them. I think I'm going to taper them down to about an inch square, give or take. A little cleanup work with a card scraper and some finish prep on the rest of the parts with the sander. Now we're ready for some glue. I glued up the two side assemblies first and once those were dry, the long rails and apron can be added. Now it's really starting to take shape. Okay, the next thing I'm going to work on is the drawer. I've gone ahead and I milled uh, down some side pieces for the drawers. I've got them to about a half inch thick and I've cut them a little bit longer than the depth of the opening so I can trim them back later to get the perfect fit. I'm going to be using half blind dovetails for the front joinery of the drawer. This was the second project that I had used half blinds on and it's my fifth and sixth joint that I had cut. I added a rabbit to the inside face of the drawer side to make alignment easier when I go to transfer the tails to the drawer front. I also used a set of dividers to lay out the joint so the tails will be spaced evenly and symmetrically. I used the bandsaw to freehand cut the tails and remove the majority of the waste. Now transferring the tails is pretty easy. The rabbet on the side sets the alignment in and out, so all that has to be adjusted is the up and down alignment. Once the alignment is set, the tails can be traced with a knife, and the knife line can be extended down the inside face of the drawer front. I chopped and pared away the waste with a chisel, and then cleaned up the remaining material working in from the end. A uh, little gappy. I just finished cutting the other end of the front uh, pin piece here. Well, let's put the tail piece in here. Just have an idea, have an idea of what it looks like here. That's not much better than the last one. <laughs> so now onto the back. I resized some maple for the back, and for the joinery, I'm using a locking rabbit joint. I'm going to remove this material here from the side piece, and then this material here from the back piece to create a little tongue that will fit right in here. While the drawer is apart, I'll cut the groove to receive the drawer bottom. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I measured and installed the bottom panel in the drawer. 
And I've tested it all, it looks pretty good. So at this point, I can actually move forward and start gluing this up. Now I can start adding the parts that will complete the drawer compartment, starting with the drawer runners. Next is the drawer guide. This fills the gap between the legs and sets the drawer location side to side. Next is the drawer stops. These are the correct thickness so that when the drawer contacts them, the drawer front will be flush to the front rails. Lastly is the kicker. This prevents the drawer from tipping downward and will be used for attaching the top to the base. Next I'm adding an under bevel to the top to give it a lighter look. I tipped the blade to some angle that looked good and then ran the top vertically through the blade with the assistance of my bride-to-be. I was going to clean up a little card scraping action here. So let's clean up pretty well. So I'll just go around the rest of the tabletop here, clean it up. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Uh, it's ready to be finished now. For the first coat of finish, I applied a thin coat of shellac as a sealer. So for a top coat on this project, I'm going to be using lacquer. And I'm going to be spraying it using my HVLP gun. The last thing is to drill holes for the screws that will secure the table top. I move the drill back and forth on the outside holes to give the screw room to move as the table top expands and contracts. So here's our completed walnut table. I think it turned out uh, pretty nicely and I, I hope, uh, hope you enjoy watching the video. Personally for me, this is the third table of the style I've built. The first one I made was just a, um, just a nightstand. So same exact idea, uh, tapered legs, um, same top style, but again, the dimensions were slightly more uh, narrow and deeper. And then from there, that simple design, this design, can really be modified to any size or shape. So you can go from a hall table like this to a nightstand pretty easily, depending on those dimensions. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video series, and I'll catch you next time. So this was a really interesting thing for me to go back and watch and edit. It's crazy to me what a difference five years can make, not just in my appearance or the stuff I have in my shop, but most importantly, my skill level and my workflow. Those are drastically better now than they were five years ago. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed taking this trip back in time with me. I know I did. Very interesting. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments about anything going on in my shop five years ago or today, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.